Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlvyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at properties uh, and naming A reads. Now what we're going to do is look at what an A read is first. We're going to look at the melting point and um, how you name some of the compounds as well, uh, combustion and reactions as well. So I'm going to start with by uh, looking at what an A read is. Basically an A read is a, a name that's given to a hydrocarbon that is based on a benzene compound. So um, we've drawn, I've written out there just to remind you, you'll see that word quite a bit, um, especially um, in A-level chemistry. So we're going to start with uh, melting point first. Now, melting points of benzene is actually slightly higher than um, hydrocarbons with a similar MR. So for example, something like uh, hexane, compare hexane with uh, benzene, uh, you'll find that benzene is slightly higher. Now, the reason why is because benzene is actually a very flat molecule, it's planar, uh, and it can um, stack or it can kind of get really close and layer up loads of benzene uh, molecules and because they can get very close to each other uh, you get a high van der Waals force so therefore the melting point increases. Um, in terms of combustion um, they burn uh, with a smoky flame um, so and um, these things uh, benzene is actually quite is a, is a carcinogenic as well so um, uh, you've got to watch out for that and you probably never see it being burnt uh, in a, in a, especially in a classroom environment because it's actually uh, been banned in UK schools. Um, but um, yes, that's basically what happens, just burns the smoky flame. Uh, in terms of nomenclature, now naming them um, can be a little bit tricky. Um, there are very complicated rules regarding whether you call it a phenyl or a benzene. Um, you don't need to know the rules, but what it means is that you do have to uh, remember um, which molecules are named phenyl and which ones are named benzene. Um, the majority of them are benzene, um, but there is some phenyl ones as well. So we're going to start with this one here. Now, this one has got a halogen on there. In this case, we've got bromine on the top there, and we've got a benzene ring. Um, in terms of naming that, uh, we're going to call that, um, I'll do this one in blue. So this one is called bromo. So you put the halogen first. So it's bromo and then benzene. There you go. So you put benzene on the end and you just say what the halogen is. Now, if that was chlorine, that would just be chloro, uh, chlorobenzene. Uh, if it was um, iodine, it would be iodobenzene, etc. So, really straightforward. This one has got a nitrate group attached to it um, and we call that nitrobenzene. So, we'll put that on there. So, really easy, just stick the word benzene on the end. Uh, it's a nitro group that's attached to it, so it's nice and simple. Um, now, if you have two different groups, uh, or two groups, sorry, uh, attached to a benzene ring, then you name it in the same way as you would name um, any other organic molecule with the, your numbers and um, commas and hyphens, etc. So, um, except what we do is we name it in terms of the number, we just call that one one, uh, we call that one four, uh, and you number it in the lowest number combination. So, if I went around this way in the cycle, then it'd be one and four. If I went around that way, it'll still be one and four. So in this case, it doesn't matter. Um, but if the CH3 group was hanging off this bit here, um, then that would be one, two, three, rather than one, two, three, four, five. So you'd pick one, three, rather than one, five, because one, three is the lowest number combination. So in this case, this one is just one, comma, four, uh, di, methyl, because we have the same group. Uh, and then we have benzene, that just gets stuck on the end like that. So it's really easy to name. Okay, the next one, this one's a little bit different. Um, where we have a, uh, a uh, amine group, so this is your amine here with your, well, this whole molecule is classed as an amine. It has a benzene um, uh, ring in there, but this time it has an OH. We just call this phenol. It's got its own specific name. Um, so make sure you remember that one. And just based on this phenol one, when you come up to here, um, and we've got this molecule here, and I'll do this one in red, um, just so we can distinguish between this one here. So um, this one is actually called, you can see we've got an NH2 here. NH2 means amines, um, and so this is called phenyl, phenyl amine. So actually the amine bit goes at the end, um, but we start, the, we start the actual naming of the molecule with phenyl. So just remember where you've got a amine group there that you've got to call it phenylamine, um, whereas all the rest of them here are benzene. You just put benzene at the end. So as long as you can remember that, you should be okay and you should be fine. 
Okay, um, just the last thing really is just reactions. Now, um, again, this was um, to do with Kekulé. Kekulé um, suggested a structure with uh, three double bonds in there. And if you had double bonds, you would expect addition reactions. Now, um, obviously, Kek that structure wasn't quite right because benzene doesn't actually undergo addition reactions. Um, they actually undergo electrophilic substitution reactions. Um, now, the reasons why are because actually um, electrophiles are electron-loving species. So these are um, uh, molecules or ions um, which will actually um, attack a electron-dense area. Now, luckily with benzene, benzene has a delocalized electron system. Uh, and that delocalization means it has a high concentration of electrons. So to an electrophile, that's very attractive. And so um, a lot of these reactions will undergo, well, most benzene uh, reactions will undergo electrophilic reactions. Um, substitution, um, now again, if you had a double bond, you would add onto a double bond. Um, but because this is a delocalized system, we actually swap uh, one of the hydrogens on benzene. So for example, if we had a hydrogen here, um, this would be swapped, let's say if we had an, um, uh, let's say if we had an electrophile, which I'll put on there, so for E plus, uh, then effectively what will happen is that will actually swap places with that. Now the mechanisms for these, uh, I'll go into in a little bit more detail, uh, but just look at my playlist uh, and you can have a look at the um, actual mechanisms to do with this, but effectively these undergo electrophilic substitution reactions. Now uh, benzene um, is actually very difficult to um, react, it's a really stable molecule um, and therefore your electrophile uh, generally has to have a full positive charge. Um, molecules with a delta positive charge um, actually find it really difficult to react with benzene. It's so stable. So uh, your electrophile generally has to have a positive charge. So a really reactive electrophile uh, to try and break into this benzene ring structure. Um, again, in schools, uh, benzene is, is actually uh, banned because of its carcinogenic properties. Um, but the reactions that you would do in school would be uh, reactions of maybe a derivative of benzene that could be um, any type of derivative which is actually a lot safer um, and um, may not have well won't have any carcinogenic properties so um, as long as you know this um, and you know what why they actually undergo electrophilic substitution and don't undergo addition reactions and um, just be aware that they, you could be asked to make the link between what Kekulé suggested and why his theory wasn't very good uh, and um, linking it with the reactions that actually benzene undergoes as I've just described. But um, that's it. I hope that helps. Bye.